you know, I think, I think all my observational work is pretty intimate. I really like making intimate films. That's kind of what drives me. But I think there's a whole other level of intimacy that you get, and I'm sure everybody in this room knows this, when you've got that little camera and it's just you. I mean, just first of all, just being you is, makes a big difference. And I think the size of the camera makes a difference, too. It's just so unobtrusive. Um, and I also think, I mean, this again is really stating the obvious, but you know, with those little cameras, you've got to be careful. You can end up shooting just acres of footage because, and it's a disastrous thing to do because you end up having to log it all and having to know it all. And the poor editor, I mean, not that I shoot acres of it, but I hear stories of kind of young filmmakers coming in with boxes of tapes saying, look, I've looked at, you know, 120 tapes. There's still 400 to go, but maybe you can get started and we got to, we need a rough cut in three weeks, you know, and the editor's, um, but just the fact that you can just be, you can, I love these cameras because I love just putting on a rucksack and in this case, tr taking a train to Bedford and just living there. And, you know, the night before I was shooting um, James till two in the morning, he's hiding his money. You know, your cameraman is, however committed they are, at a certain point they'll say, Henry, you know, we need to eat dinner, you know, or I'd like to go to bed at some point. Whereas I'm very happy not to eat dinner and not to go to bed, you know, if I really think I'm gonna get something special. So I think I, I love those cameras and I, and I love the, in, it does just open up just a completely different level of intimacy, I think, for this kind of film. First of all, the camera's small. I think that makes a difference. I've never shot with a bigger camera. And I, so I think that makes it, you know, the thing is just almost like an extension of your head almost. Um, and I think also it just allows you to be around a lot. I mean, I loved, we'll, we'll show a clip of, of Brian in a second, who I decided to get the BBC and they let me make a film about this guy that James started to become really best friends with while I was in the hostel. And he was a street drinker, alcoholic, and I really liked him as well. And I said at one point, you know, and I got to know him really well. I said, look, I, I'd be interested in making a film on you. Would you be up for that? And he decided he was. And, um, um, you know, but I, at a certain point, I used to go up just to bed for not to film, but to watch football with these guys, because I just really, and I liked the whole house. There were like six guys living there, and I spent so much time there, filming or not filming, that I just, it sort of became a big part of my life for six months. And um, so to answer your question, I think just being around a lot, shooting a lot, which is sort of traditionally what really good cinema verite films did, where you would get a lot of money and you could go off with your cameraman, your sound recordist, and your AP, and you could just live somewhere for a year. You know, I mean, I assume that's what the Maisels did, you know, back in, you know, the 60s when they made Salesman and Grey Gardens. You know, I don't really know. But, you know, you could just, money wasn't an object. I, when I first worked at the BBC, someone said, Henry, you know, in the old days, they would send you to the Amazon with kind of hundreds of cans of film, and people would come back two years late. They'd sort of go, whatever happened to that Henry Singer, you know, and two years later, this guy would come out of the jungle, you know, with all these cans of film and make these award-winning films. And, but you obviously could, you can't, you couldn't do that after a while. So I think you, and obviously if you're one person, it's just that much easier to build that kind of unobtrusive relationship. I don't think people ever totally forget you're there. I think you just sort of become part of the furniture. I mean, I mean in moments of drama, they do, you know. Uh, I can't give an ex you know, but like when, you know, some of the conversation that's not there, or even the conversation that is there with the Chinlins, you know, that's a big dramatic moment. People sort of forget there's a cameraman in the corner. But with James, it's clearly he hasn't forgotten I'm there. He turns to me and says, Henry, can't you help me find the money, man? So, but I think that people do just become comfortable with you. And I think part of that is building trust, where they think, you know, I, more and more I can just be myself. I think early on, people aren't entirely themselves. You don't often use a lot of material on an observational film that you shoot initially because it's so obvious when you look at it that people aren't themselves yet. It just takes time.